I don't think you need to be particularly observant to know that I like Scrubs. It's a great show with outstanding performances by actors that are giving material so good that a show with scenes like this... I told you so, I told you so, I, I, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so... ...can still claim that it's realistic and inspire people to pursue a career in medicine. With all of this in mind, I guess I feel comfortable saying that I came a bit late to discovering the show. Late enough that I saw its spell imitation years before the real thing. How elephant imitation? Well... To say that name tags is not as good at scrubs is a bit like saying that this isn't as good as this. It's not supposed to be good. In fact, all it needs to do is to have a successful beginning to end run, and name tags kind of achieves that. It's time for side scrollers from Screw Attack. Back in the olden days, there was Screw Attack, and Screw Attack was big. Really big. One of the biggest names on the internet that didn't have any sort of corporate backing. Big. Their forum members unironically got a sense of community from being called G1s. The Angry Video Game Nerd was one of the first big YouTubers and its content was moved to game trailers in association with Screw Attack. These two people were friends. It's in the middle of this that 22-year-old Janet Nabenbauer successfully pitched, created and made a show for them. It's a testament to the early internet that this was about a year and a half after he started an online video presence. So what about the show? Well, are you seeing the footage that I'm playing over this? Because that should tell you a lot. The sets are a school play level, but not a big school play. The one you're supposed to make in the classroom because you and six other people are failing and the teacher took pity on y'all and had to pull an assignment from somewhere. But hey, maybe the audio is better. Look, can I go home and try and talk to him? Do you think it'll do any good? Well, only one way to find out. Nope. Our main characters are Jared, played by Jared and not attempting a JD impression. You see, as amazingly hot as Chun Li is, her massive, powerful thighs would crush any man like a vice. Dom, played by. And Josh, who will be our great value Dr. Cox, played by. You know, with the benefit of hindsight, I have started to be very, very suspicious of productions where everyone just plays a character with their same name. Stop wasting my time before I shove your dongle so far up your game deck that the only thing we'll be trying to conquer is the toilet! The show is split into 10 episodes, none of which exceed 10 minutes in length without credits. Despite this, they manage to squeeze in three main arcs. Meeting and dating a Gramer, the Seth story arc, and the promotion. All of this is well and good except for a small issue, one that requires direct comparison with Scrubs again. A hospital is a complex, eternally challenging life or death arena. A video game store, well, let's let Jared explain it. You're not allowed to play anything, so you can get bored pretty easily. Couldn't have said it better myself. Game stores do not have life or death stakes. They didn't back in 08 and they should as hell don't now apart from whether the game store itself lives or dies. That being said, I must admit that I find the entire thing charming on how quickly it became dated. Nowadays video game stores look like this, and if you go to a physical one, it's for literally anything but buying video games. D&D tournaments, retro gaming, tempting to bankrupt billionaires. All of it more likely to turn a profit than straight up video game sales. All the story that they built in means that everything is a bit... rushed. Let's take the Gramer arc. After an explanation of what a Gramer is... They're the kind of jock guys who are always wearing sandals, along with khaki shorts, Throw in a short sleeved collared shirt from Amber Crombie and Fitch. Top it off with a backwards cap. If you're still unsure, they'll say things like, I play Madden and Halo. I'm a gamer. Jared meets a girl at the video game store and charms her with his natural abilities. Hey. That's enough for her to want a date. See, this is where I'm getting confused. Did she not see you standing right next to him? Yeah, no, he has every right to be suspicious on this one. But the script apparently wanted this to be a thing, so here we are. With him having a date with her from- <coughs> And yet somehow they hit it off really well. So can I see your master sword? Wait, is she serious? Oh, of course. 
I don't have a stone pedestal or anything for it, but I figured that if... This took an episode. So from... <laughs> to this... In about... Yeah. But hey, who couldn't resist this man's charms? But then something horrible happens. You know, I have some time before work. Would you like to play something? Sure, um, put in Halo 3. I, uh, I haven't picked that one up yet. Oh, um, okay, well, do you want to play Madden instead? <laughs> this is what I miss from the internet content in my life. Content where the problem they have is so minor and incomprehensibly stupid that they wouldn't hyperfocus on it except for the fact that anything heavier would require more work. It's damn amusing. Especially when the horror of them not liking the same games causes him to break up with a what? Yeah... This isn't working for me. And by the way, for those of you playing at home, yes, this means that the relationship lasted less than a day. Every guy I've ever been with has been a real jerk. And you are the first nice one. You seem to really care about me. And now I know that guys like you would want to be with someone like me. Woman, you met him for all of a day and a half. Everyone else in this town is that much of a jerk that this won't out the best person you've ever dated. I would consider moving out of town. Out of county. Out of state, depending how far away you're from the next closest city. Um, the studio's gonna be in Rhinelander. That's over half the state away. Yeah. Oh! Good for you. And that's roughly the experience of watching name tags. Jared goes from underexperienced new hire to pro in about four months. And the reason he does that is because they need for him to fire his friend, and the reason he needs to fire his friend is because at the end of the show a regional manager has come around and offered him a store in a different part of the state. Coincidentally, the same part Kami here was going to. Yes, a promotion to store manager and your own store. No way. The last two episodes deal with him deciding whether he should take that shot. And yes, that means he went from absolute newbie to manager of his own store in under a year. Gotta love physical media and a pre-08 crash economy, I guess. The show ends on an actually interesting note, especially if you know narration duties are not exclusive to JD in Scrubs, and that there are entire episodes dedicated to exploring other characters using narration as the medium. Wow, so can you imagine what it's gonna be like without Jared here? No, I can't. Yeah, me neither. Indeed. Scrubs may be like that, but without Jared, everything in here is just a set dressing. There is also a bit of reality subtext on this one. See, in real life, just as name tags was ending, Screw Attack was opening an actual, physical game store. That prophetically named Game Attack. And managing it was going to be one Jared Nabenpower. The store lasted a year before succumbing to new priorities and lease negotiations. Rewatching name tags was very interesting, mostly because I knew that this wasn't very good even when I saw it as a kid. It looked like it was recorded on an iPhone 1. It sounded like it was recorded on an iPhone 1. And the fact that they didn't change their names for the characters should tell you how much thought went into the more nuanced details of production. I can't speak for my younger self. But as I watched this, I tried to figure out why I liked it back then. And the only thing that I could come up with was that it was something new that I had never seen at the time. People who had about the same acting skills and budget as me and my friends had, but they had succeeded in putting it on the internet and getting hundreds of thousands of people to see it on a website that wasn't created by a random faceless company. Honestly, when you look at it that way, it was something that, while not exclusive to this particular era of the internet, is certainly something that could have only reached the level of success it did in that era, certainly with those production values. And then, when it was done, everyone went back to their normal lives, a fun blip to tell other people it's time is right and there is little else to talk about. Even Jared, he was a couple of years away from the mainstream success that allowed him to make a living off the internet. With all of this in mind, name tags should be seen as something from a time capsule, but one of those things that you don't remember putting in and you don't really want once you take it out. <laughs> <laughs>